What's going on everybody? Super Saiyan Paul are back at it again with another Dragon Ball Super video. Today we're going to be talking about Manga Chapter 50, as well as what type of doors they've opened with what they've established, as well as diving into further character development and other stuff. Before we jump to this video guys, make sure you guys smash that like button, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon, as well as like the video, and comment down below with your thoughts afterwards because this really helps me out thank you guys so much for your support and let's dive right in so in dragon ball super manga chapter 50 what we're left off with is vegeta headed to planet yardrat planet yardrat is a very vague planet as far as we know we do know that one of frieza's space pods from the original namek arc was programmed to head there we also know that's where goku was for all of the time spent before we eventually met up with future trunks in the cell saga slash android saga and what we know is that he learned instant transmission and they have a plethora of techniques they can use there what exactly is vegeta chasing because we do know that instant transmission is mainly a move used by goku we do know that someone like the Supreme Kai was able to use it, and it's not going to be that far-fetched to say that Vegeta could potentially unlock that super easy from going there. At this point in time, with Vegeta learning how to master Super Saiyan God on his own, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say if he wanted to learn instant transmission, he could. But it's not to say that that's the entirety of the entire reason of him going there. There may be other reasons to it, but let's say let's play devil's advocate and it's just instant transmission he's going for which doesn't necessarily make the most sense because in some cases he could be using it for the reasons about to specify and other reasons he could have just asked goku to do this but it could be a thing about pride it could be his own little scheme of things it could be him acting out in like a form of rage because of what happened there on planet Namek and the embarrassment he felt he's gonna go out do this and try to redeem himself He's still got some of that old character in him, as well as some of the new ones, so we may be seeing a combination of both on screen when this is animated, and that's something I'm really hyped for. Hopefully, we get like more of Vegeta taking the spotlight here, because with him going to Yardrat, either what's going to happen is we're going to see him disappear for a while from the manga or whatever and then just show up in bits and pieces or they're going to focus solely on him. And I'm hoping that they, they do focus on him because he's always been the second fiddle to Goku and this is a good moment for him to get some time to shine. Like I've said before guys, in the Terminator Power, it really veered towards Goku towards the end, especially with MUI. Do I hate that? No, I actually love that because of MUI and Freeze. it was a really good thing. But here, this is a good arc for Vegeta to also redeem himself for what happened with Broly, because as you guys know, he fought Broly first, then he helped Broly power up a bunch, and then all of a sudden he came into play when it came to Gogeta. So, it doesn't necessarily seem like they're fusing off the bat right now. I don't think that's in the books for this point in time. I think they may be saving that for a much later time because that just was done. They just made flashbacks to Broly in the manga. Those were cut panels, but it did happen. And for them to go back right into Fusion and went back to back to back in terms of Zamasu, then Broly, and then now here with Moro, with Fusion being the end-all be-all, I don't really think that's going to really help up the hype of the series, especially when they're coming off of a break this long. I mean, all we've got right now is the Super Dragon Ball Heroes anime, and some people, it's not their cup of tea, so for them to start this back, get the pacing on track, and future-proof the series as well, I think Fusion should be left off of the cards right now, and it seems like that's the direction they're veering in. Let me know in the comment section below right now, guys. Would you guys want to see Fusion again? If so, Gogeta or Vegito? The reason why I'd rather not is because with what they've done so far, and especially with the recent chapter, with them revealing Moro's third wish, being that he freed most of the prisoners that he was with, and unleash them on the Z fighters it makes sense for them to have more of the spotlight because this can really stretch out this arc and something about them they seem very ominous we haven't seen them use individual moves Moro is powering them up they have very unique designs like if you look at them it seems as though if you go back to the Terminator power it's as if he created his own team if you look at them they could actually use these character designs for that type of purpose and I hope they do because this arc has been absolutely amazing and for them to stretch it out this adds more character to it but 
They could also go the Resurrection F route, where it's just small mini bosses that you fight right off the bat and get them out of the way, like Tagoma and stuff like that, where it's nothing really substantial in the long, the grand scheme of things. Like when you think of the Frieza arc, we think of Frieza, but remember there was the Ginyu Force and stuff like that. Hopefully they have some personality to them. It would be a really big waste if they don't. And with them being powered up by Moro, and the, the few things that have been put in place here, like if you think about it, Vegeta going to planet Yardrat, the most straightforward way of thinking, and hopefully they do something that diverges this, but kind of adds a bit of a, a bit of a flair and mix up to this, is that Vegeta goes to planet Yardrat. He goes, gets instant transmission. Once he gets instant transmission, he figures out some new tactic to bring to the battlefield. That being, he goes and gets other fighters, brings them to the fight, and they all go and fight against Moro and the prisoners at once. If you really think about it, the Galactic Patrol are kind of understaffed when it comes to having beings that could fight at this level. Vegeta being one of pride, him having to have some serious pride when it comes to having the Saiyan lineage and everything like that. Him going and getting his former protege Kaba, maybe even getting Kefla if they fuse and stuff like that to the battlefield may be something very very amazing to see. As well as getting Broly because the very interesting thing is they cut the panels that actually connected it to the manga where they were reminiscing about Broly. I don't know why they did that, maybe it might be for something that may be revealed down the line, and maybe that it's just something that they didn't want to spoil, but those are the things you need to take into account here. What if Vegeta goes and gets Broly on the battlefield? I mean, who here doesn't want to see that? Especially riding off of the hype of the movie, it would really go and connect the arcs because what people don't know is at this point in time we don't know if they're going to be reanimating the movie into the arcs all we know is that the manga decided to skip over the movie but they can always play that card when it comes to the animated show or series because if they decide to go that route they stall for more time when it comes to animation they make more money and even if it's uninspired people are still gonna watch it and I don't necessarily agree with that, like, if, just my point of view, I don't want to see that happen at all. I don't think they can top anything they did with the movie Broly. There is some exposition they can throw in there, but for me, I don't want to see that be done. What I want to see happen is that if they do end up recruiting Broly, bring him to the battlefield, have him have the spotlight. Let Broly just take it and go. Have some more character development for Broly. The reason why Broly is so popular, why this movie was so good, was the moment to get to see Broly talking to Chile and Lemon, Lemon, I can't even say his name properly, but, um, when you saw those vulnerable moments for Broly, especially when he had that more human side to him, that element is what created him into this beast of a powerhouse of a character. That's why the fandom is going absolutely cr crazy for Broly this year. And that's what I want to see. I would want to see Broly talk more. I'd want to see him interact more. Vegeta bringing him to the battlefield because remember, all of their fathers technically had a connection and it was really cool to see how they put that into the story because they are technically paying for their father's sins and, and that's why I love the three of them as a trio and having Broly being incorporated and brought back in the story right away would add some more introductory to the story if it's how they launch the series because if you think about it if they just launch it from where the manga starting without any exposition they may show those cut panels they may not we don't really know too much about Broly at this point in time and it's something they can really build upon there's so much room for the world to be expanded upon because of Broly and Moro and if they had a third Saiyan at the very least it would change up the entire battlefield. Goku and Vegeta are very underhanded right now and it seems as though if they got help that would be the best thing ever. However, we don't know Vegeta's true purpose of going to Yardrat. Imagine if he learns instant transmission, or even unlocks MUI down the line because of what he's doing here. And not saying that he's going to learn it on planet Yardrat, but just because of the actions of him taking here and doing something very different, that would be very, very cool to see. But like I said guys, this is just a me talking about my opinion, discussing about what's happened in the chapter, as well as theorizing what may happen next and what I want to see. Like I said, the main key points here is Vegeta learning instant transmission, Vegeta going and getting help. 
Vegeta has always been reluctant to ask for help, and that's something we can both respect as well as disrespect about Vegeta's character. It depends on the person, if anything. The only person he's ever really teamed up with is Goku, and for him to go and get Broly, that would be a good change of pace. The reason that really bothers me though is whenever he asks for help, it always gives me a flashback of when he threw Nappa into the sky and blew him up for asking for help. It was, it was something that I never could forget, but now that you see him and he's changed so much, this may be the turning point where he goes and gets someone like that. That's why I would rather see that happen, especially with Broly, because that means he's changed a full 180 from what he used to be. Although Kaba may be the more logical person for him to get because as we know, he's established more of a connection with that type of character, however, that's out of the universe and that, that may be too far to go and get them, you never know. I mean, they did establish themselves in the Tournament of Power, so you don't have to build anyone up, but at the same time, do people want to see that again or do you want to see Broly? Let me know in the comment section below what do you guys think they should do and for them to bring that new person in, whoever it is, if they do go this instant transmission route and it goes this kind of straightforward predictable route, what do you guys think they're going to be using them for? Are they going to attack Moro directly? Are they going to be used for the henchmen? What do you think their role would be? I hope it's Broly, I hope he plows through all of the fighters if it's him. If not, if they end up getting more than one fighter and it is the other Saiyans through Universe 6, have the other prisoners become super strong, have each of them have their own type of character. I mean, the Ginyu Force, if you look back on it, they did have their own type of characters and that was pretty good. If you think about it, if they have that kind of similar vibe here and each one of them doesn't just fade away that fast, that would be the route to go and I would respect that. But Hopefully, if, if it's me, I would wish for Vegeta gets into transmission, gets Broly, brings Broly, Broly tears everybody apart, and eventually he goes after Moro, and then they actually end up getting some serious hits onto him. Now, as for Moro being defeated, I still don't really know how that's going to go, because sealing him away isn't perfect enough, and yet... That seems like it's the only course of action at this point in time with how powerful he's become. So, let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section below. I'll be seeing you guys next time. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys subscribe. Hit that bell icon. As well as subscribe to my second channel. I'll be seeing you guys next time, alright? Take care. Peace.